I don't do phone reviews, but when I do, well, we'll see how we go. It's the iPhone 10. So there have been many iPhone 10 reviews. Really, I've kept out of that. I always have. You notice I don't do mobile phone reviews. However, I've been living with the iPhone 10 since it came out. So I had it day one, and there were a load of things said about it. I want to check some of those things and tell you about my experience with the iPhone 10. And I want to get this done quick. First off, is it worth a thousand dollars? No, no, it's not. It is very powerful. It does a bunch of new things but we'll get onto those in a bit. Secondly, I wanna take a look at the camera. The camera is very good. Portrait mode's very good. Doesn't work all that well on things that aren't people. Uh, but the camera is very good. A very welcome addition is the, the two times telephoto lens, which you know, we've had before, but now it's a bit faster. It's very good. One surprise feature for me is low light capabilities. Here we've got some low light photos uh, and the camera holds up really well. Where you would expect it to get a bit noisier, the software in there does something quite smart and smooths it out. It's a bit like the skin smoothing tool, but it seems to work on most things. So there isn't the really unpleasant noise that you see in other cameras. So check. The camera's great. The bigger screen, uh, it's pretty good, but you get a bit extra on the top, a bit extra on the bottom. And lots of places, like YouTube for example, they can't take advantage of the full screen. Certainly not in the bit that matters. Netflix, on the other hand, can. And it's the same across the board. Some apps can, some apps can't. But in any event, it doesn't, Apple themselves aren't using any more of this screen to do anything useful. There isn't more stuff. There might be a couple more icons from, a, from the very small uh, devices, but you're not really getting much more. The rest of the display has always been great, and I maintain that's still the best display on a smartphone today. But I have two major gripes with this phone. One is wireless charging. I bought a whole bunch of wireless chargers. Long story short, you don't need wireless charging. If you need to charge your phone in the day, then you plug it in because you need speed. If you get home at night, put it on charge next to your bed, then it's just as easy to put the cable in anyway. And your phone life will, your battery life will last longer. On the iPhone 10, they have a great battery in there. It's the first time since I've had an iPhone that I can drive to work for an hour in the morning with the Google Maps. I can drive home, use the phone all day, and still have enough juice to watch my fill of Netflix in the evening. That's really good, but you don't hear this stuff being spoke about very often. So wireless charging, that's a duffer. No home button, that's not a problem. You think it will be, but actually, you get used to it. My biggest gripe is Face ID. For example, if we look here, I mean, it just simply doesn't work. If I wear my hat as I am now, it simply doesn't work. And not only does it not work, there we go, it's failed, but then it takes a few seconds to come up and give you the option for a passcode, which is infuriating. It also doesn't work if you're in a car at all. It doesn't work from funny angles. Um, I'm sure that results may vary, but in all honesty, it's about 30% of the time that Face ID works for me. And it really is down to the way that, that people use their phones in the real world. If I hold my phone in front of me with my hat off, it's really good. Let's check it out. No, not that time either. But usually it gets me straight in. However, it simply doesn't make your day any easier. And that's if smartphones were about anything, it was to make your day a bit easier. Face ID does not do that. Touch ID did. Touch ID was really good if you were in a, in a crowded place, let's say the London Underground, and you need to quickly access it. You tap your thumb on, tap it on the contactless gate, and you're through. Face ID isn't like that. It, it simply doesn't work as well. And when it does work, it's significantly slower. So now you have to plan, these are first world problems, I realise, but a few seconds in advance if you actually want to use it. What I've done is just got so used to using the passcode now that Face ID really isn't relevant for me at all. I'm gonna add one more gripe to the list, and that is the positioning of the buttons. Now I know Apple aren't the first people to put volume buttons on one side, power hold home button on the other side. I reckon, well, 
this many times, when I pick my phone up to answer a call or at the car or wherever, I'm taking a screenshot. It's really, really frustrating. So, those are my gripes with it. Now, the phone is immensely powerful. I don't know when I can use that power. The way I know it's powerful is because running a mobile uh, Bitcoin miner or Electronium miner as I am, um, you can see the power. It's more than twice as powerful as the iPhone 6S Plus. Um, but I'm simply not accessing that functionality. At the moment, and because I've not changed it, my 6S Plus is set up more or less the same as the iPhone 10. All the apps run just as well. I don't use any of the real high-end gaming stuff. So this extra power, maybe one day it'll be useful, but Apple, you're really not coming forward with the innovations and, and surprises that you used to. In fact, for $1,000 for a, this smartphone, it's too much money. I'm sure the investment is there on the inside, but it's not accessible by the users. And I've been a big fan of Apple products for a very long time. In fact, I used to work for Apple and my entire technology ecosystem is built around Apple. We have MacBooks, uh, iMacs, iPhones, iPads, Airport Expresses, Apple TVs. So it's very difficult for me to change now to an Android environment where most of this stuff doesn't talk shop together properly. So I'm pretty well committed, but I am frustrated at what Apple's doing now, which appears to me have run out of ideas. Sure, you can argue the design of things like the Apple Pencil and some of the other, uh, well, the Apple Mouse Charging and uh, the notch, maybe. Uh, incidentally, the notch doesn't bother me. Um, but, you know, Apple were really ahead of the game and made what I consider to be the best tools. Upon getting this phone was the first time I really looked around at other phones, and I've actually settled on buying or pre-ordering at this stage the red smartphone as well um but God, you'll guess as good as mine when that turns up anyway this is my first and probably last well no i will do one more smartphone review and that will be when the red phone comes out um but if you disagree with what i say or you think i've missed something or you're thinking of buying an iphone and would like me to test a particular feature for you by all means do let me know in the interim if you wouldn't mind subscribing hit that notifications uh, icon and that will do for now get out of here